We are going to continue talking about exponent rules. So look at this purple page that gives you all the properties of exponents. So we're going to review these real quick. All right, anything to the zero power equals one. It doesn't matter what the number is, it equals one. Let's say it is 5x squared y all to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is going to equal one. It doesn't matter what it is. Multiplying like bases, we're gonna add our exponents together. This is wrong because three plus five is actually eight. So rewrite it with the correct exponent. It should be two to the eighth. If you have an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, we're going to send that exponent in and actually multiply exponents. So show that little arrow there. So it's a times b. So in this case, 2 to the 3rd raised to the 5th. You're going to multiply 5 times 3, which is 15. If we have division, we're going to subtract our exponents, so a minus b, as long as they are like bases. So it's 2 to the 5th over 2 to the 3rd. We're going to subtract 5 and 3 to get 2 to the 2nd power. If these are flipped around, it would be 3 minus 5, which is a negative 2. You can't leave your answer as a negative power, so I'm going to circle that whole term. And this is on the top because it's just a whole number. A whole number is over 1. We're going to rewrite it on the bottom as 2 squared. But if nothing's there, it's understood 1. So I put that 1 on top. So it's actually 1 over 2 squared. And then the rule of negative powers, Wherever the negative power is, you're going to move it to the opposite, like numerator, denominator. Remember, numerator's top, denominator's bottom. The last one we're not doing right now. Okay, So we're going to put this to the side. We'll use it as we go along, and then you can use it as you're doing your assignment. All right, so let's review. We're going to do this problem together. First thing I usually want to do is get rid of any negative exponents. So I'm going to look at this, look at the, the negative exponents, move them around, keep everything else where it's at. So I'm going to write my division bar. And anything that is not a negative power, I'm just going to rewrite it. I need to go ahead, well, the y5 is going to be right there still. So I just rewrote everything that's not a negative exponent. Now any negative exponent, I'm going to move them. So the z to the negative 4, it's on top. So whenever I move it, I'm going to put it on bottom and make it a positive 4. And then x to the negative 3, I'm going to circle that. Since it's on bottom, I'm going to move it to the top and make it positive. And then z negative 9, I'm going to circle it. It's a negative 9. I'm going to take it to the top as a 9. All right, now we want to simplify top and bottom. So we want to look at like terms or like bases. So I have x3 and x3. These are being multiplied. Even though there's a y between it, if I just cover that up with my finger, I still have x3 times x3. 
So that means I'm going to add my bases. If you look back at the rule over here where I'm pointing, we're going to add our bases. So we're going to add 3 plus 3, making that x fit. Now division, I'm going to circle y2 and y5 together because it's division, so it's like this one. We're going to subtract our exponents. So it's going to be y2 minus 5. And then z's can be z9 minus 4. And nothing's left on the bottom because I've combined everything. I've combined all my x's, all my y's, all my z's. So nothing is left on the bottom right now. All right, so now I'm going to uh, keep on going. So x6. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract this. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. And then z9 minus 4 is positive 5. Nothing's on the bottom still. Just going to stay. Okay, now equals. I need to do anything that has a negative exponent. So I'm going to start with y negative 3. So x6 stays on top. z5 stays on top. But y negative 3 becomes y positive 3 on the bottom. Yep, that is the final answer. So I'm showing every little bit of my work. Just so you know where it's coming from. In the beginning, it's hard to see where everything is moving around because there's so many different variables. They're all moving around. So if you keep track of where everything's going and why, um, you'll be better off. You'll learn it a little better. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Negative 5, A7, B3, over 15, A negative 5, B2, C0. So like I did last time, I just rewrote anything that had a negative exponent. So I'm going to rewrite the negative 5, A7, B3. Over 15. But I have a negative exponent here. So I'm going to circle it and move it up top and make it positive. And then b squared. And anything to the zero power, what does that equal? So we're going to mark it out because it's like multiplying times one. Do we need times one written down? Does it change anything if I do? Uh, b times 1. It doesn't, so we don't need that 1. So I, every time I have something to the power of 0, I'm just going to mark it out. Alright, so we got rid of the negative exponent. We got rid of the 0 power. C is gone completely because it just equals 1 and C is not there anymore. Now I'm going to simplify the constants, then the a's, then the b's. So like we did the other day, when we divided these, we're going to divide those in our calculator. So we'll put this in the calculator. You can divide and hit math and enter, enter, or you can put it in alpha y equals, or you put it in as a fraction, negative 5 over 15, like that. That's negative 1 third, or negative 5 divided by 15, math, frac, negative 1 third. We're going to rewrite it, or one-third, sorry, as negative 1 over 3. Now we want to combine A's and B's. So the A's are on top together, so they're being multiplied. So I'm going to add my exponent. So that means I'm going to add the 7 plus the 5, so that's a12 on top, 7 plus 5 is 12, and then B3 and B2, I'm going to subtract those, so go ahead and write it, B3 minus 2. Alright, so this would be negative, I don't need that 1 there anymore, um, A12. 
Yeah, because I don't need the one there. Um, and then B, three minus two is just one. I can leave the one off over three. Instead of putting it as negative 1a, I just got rid of the 1 because does 1 change anything? Mm -mm. This means the same thing as that. But it's negative because see how there's a negative out here on top? Negative 5 over 15. That's why that it's still negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, it was, if you left those positive, that'd be wrong because we had this negative out front to begin with. All right. Our last rule is this one right here. This is A over B all raised to the M. So this is similar to this rule. The only thing different is you have a fraction on the inside. But you're still going to do the same thing. You're going to send that exponent in and multiply exponents. But you have to do it to top and to bottom. I'm going to write here sin exponent in to every term on top and bottom. You're sending that exponent into every single term on the top and the bottom. And when you do that, you multiply your exponent. So this will actually be A to the M over B to the M. That's what that means. Because you're multiplying, it comes itself so many times, both top and bottom, not just the top. What a lot of people make a mistake on is they just put it to the top instead of top and bottom. All right, so we're going to do these examples together. So 4 over 3 raised to the third power. Send it in. Show your arrow. If there's no exponent, whatever the exponent is outside becomes a new exponent. 4 to the third over 3 to the third. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put it in the calculator. And then you look and see if you can simplify that. So I'm going to put it in, divide it, enter, and then math, enter, enter, and it does not reduce down. That is our final answer. Go to the next one. Two goes in, top and bottom. I should have put these in parentheses because really the only time that the parentheses will matter is if that number is a negative. So since these were both positive, we really didn't need it. These two are positive. We really didn't need to. But just remember, if you send it in and it's negative, you do need to put it in the Just one over four. Can't reduce that. Our next one. Now we're dealing with variables. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing you can do to simplify those. The next one, we have a negative exponent. You don't have to. Mm -mm. All right, so if we have a negative exponent, we can't leave our answer like that. So we've got to move this. 
So if it's on top, it goes to bottom. If it's on bottom, it goes to top. So this is a negative exponent, g to the negative 3. So it's going to go down to be on the bottom, g to the 3. And then you can have a negative exponent still. So if it's on bottom, it goes to the top. All right, next one, you have to send it into every term, top and bottom. And just like this rule says, you're going to multiply x on it. So we just have a 7, though. So it's going to be 7 squared on top. And then x, 2 times 2. Over y three times two the only thing that you can simplify is the seven square. I'm just gonna rewrite it down here. Forty nine x four over y six. So we didn't have to do any kind of simplifying. All right, last one that we're going to do together. Send that squared in to everything. This will be negative 1 squared. And so this is where I definitely want to make sure I put in parentheses. Because if you don't, it will come out um, with the wrong sign. And then x3 squared, I'm going to multiply 2 times 3, so that's x6, y squared. Negative 1 squared, yeah, it's positive 1, because squared means it times itself. So if I do negative 1 times a negative 1, it becomes positive. Nope, square. Positive one. Okay. That's all we're going to do together today. We'll finish those last two tomorrow. But you're either going to work on Delta Math or a maze. This maze. So make sure that you show work. You can show it on here on a separate sheet of paper, but you will turn it in.